We want to get to that standoff right off the top of the night. We've been following since early this afternoon. Police are not confirming the standoff is over, but we do have some new video from a scene. This is in the Churchill neighborhood, Churchill Estates neighborhood over on the north side. You see on the porch there, you can see what appears to be a man walk out of the home with his hands up. We're going to let this video roll again. We have not been told by police that the standoff is over, but as you see right in front of the front door, a man facing that door with his hands up moving towards officers. It appears as if this standoff is over, but again, we continue to wait for confirmation from police officers. Yeah, what a taxing day for law enforcement and residents in that neighborhood. This is near a section of the Churchill Estates neighborhood just south of Bitters and Blanco. The night team's Jonathan Cotto has been there for much of the day today. And Jonathan, have police been able to provide you with an update? That's right. Well, unfortunately, we have yet to hear from the San Antonio Police Department. Those images we just received a couple of minutes ago. And as, I can, as you can see, the scene behind me is now completely cleared. We can assume that the surrender was a peaceful one. But let's take a look at some of the images that we were able to gather throughout the day. After many hours, the SAPD successfully negotiated with a male suspect who surrendered unharmed. And according to police, the suspect was spotted at 1.30 this afternoon and managed to escape on foot, making his way back into his own home where he stayed barricaded up until nine, roughly 9.30 tonight. Runny Mead Lane is the street off of Churchill Estates where the scene took place. It's comprised mostly of renovated townhomes. Several residents unable to access their home for hours expressed their concern. Just going for my afternoon ride. I uh, left the house probably around 2.20. And just as I was uh, approaching the intersection here to leave, the officers were starting to close off the section. And uh, of course, it got my attention. So I uh, stopped to uh, take a look and uh, obviously make sure everything was okay before I left my family back in the neighborhood. Now, members of the SWAT, EMS, and the fire department all form part of this effort to de-escalate the situation. Now, again, the suspect is wanted for robber, uh, aggravated robbery, according to the San Antonio police. When we spoke to them earlier, mentioned that it was involving a seven-year-old man who was held at a knife point and eventually stabbed. That's all I have tonight. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Again, uh, looks like it came to a peaceful ending, that standoff in the Churchill Estates. Well, vaccines continue to be a big story tonight. There are still more appointments for COVID-19 vaccine available. You may have seen Metro Health's website say registration is full, but tomorrow the city will open up 2,000 more slots to make appointments for Tuesday. The process will continue each day until the new shipment of 9,000 doses are accounted for at the Alamo Dome. A reminder, there are two ways to register for an appointment. You can do so online or on the city's COVID-19 website, and we also have a link on ksat.com. You can also dial 311, select option eight after you do that. Now there may be a busy signal, but you can call again. And tomorrow there will also be appointments available at the WellMed clinics on the west and south side of town, the Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior One Stop Center off Calabra Road, and the Alvila Cisneros Senior Community Activity Center off Southwest Military Drive will, ha will have appointments for their own 9,000 dose shipments. By the way, appointments can only be made by phone beginning at 8 in the morning. That number on your screen, 833-968-1745. While major cities continue receiving vaccine allocations, some rural communities are still waiting. The Texas Organization of Rural and Community Hospitals says 10% of rural hospitals still have not received a shipment. The delay leaves those on the front line unprotected, and some say that could cause negative consequences. It has been very frustrating it, it, for the physicians and the nurses that are working double shifts in these hospitals. Macbeth says about 16 rural hospitals in Texas still don't have COVID-19 vaccines. He says many of them have applied through the state's website to request the vaccines, but their applications are pending. But that's a very cumbersome process. It's not a user-friendly system. Earlier this week, Governor Greg Abbott touted the state's distribution efforts. Never before in the history of this state has Texas vaccinated so many people so quickly. 
As the virus continues to surge across Texas, the pending applications could be a big problem, especially when the next hospital is 60 miles away. They don't have very many employees. And, and if half of those people are out because they're either infected with COVID or they're quarantined because somebody else had COVID, all of a sudden you don't have anybody to work in the hospital. That staff shortage wouldn't impact only COVID patients, but also people driving through town who may suffer a medical emergency or get hurt in a crash. Rural hospitals are important to, to everybody. Rural areas didn't receive Pfizer vaccines during the first week of distribution. One reason, the minimum order requirement. Pfizer required 975 doses, while Moderna only required 100 dose orders at a time. Another hurdle were special refrigerators needed for the Pfizer vaccine. Macbeth says some hospitals have been able to rely on neighboring pharmacies or hospitals to give them a limited number of vaccines. And that's kind of how things work in rural Texas. Texas, neighbors take care of neighbors, but that doesn't solve the problem. Now, eligible people can sign up in any Texas county to get the vaccine because the state does not require proof of residency. Well, Monday at 10, we will continue our Trust Index series on COVID-19 vaccines. We clear up confusion as your questions on the vaccines continue to come in. Again, that is Monday right here on the Night Beat. Now to an update on coronavirus cases here at home. More than 2,800 new cases reported today. We are now seeing more than 2,000 coronavirus cases on average, according to the seven-day average. There were also six new deaths reported today. And for the fourth night in a row, another dip in our hospitals tonight. 1,387 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. 403 are in the intensive care unit and 243 are on ventilators. If you've driven past the parole along 281, you may have noticed a billboard with several messages, one of them from the FBI, the agency requesting tips in the violence at the Capitol last week. Some people identified as being part of the mob have been charged, but if you have any tips, the number to dial 1-800-CALL-FBI. You can also leave a tip online at FBI.gov slash U.S. Capitol. Washington, D.C. and states across the country are on high alert for more violence. Many states taking precautions ahead of the presidential inauguration, including right here in Texas. Meanwhile, investigations continue into the deadly siege at the Capitol. Tonight, we're getting some detailed accounts, including one from an officer who confronted that crowd. During the deadly attempted coup at the U.S. Capitol, police were outnumbered and overwhelmed. Some guys started getting a hold of my gun and uh, they were screaming out, um, you know, kill him with his own gun. Um, at that point, you know, it was just like self-preservation. Um, you know, how do I survive this situation? The violence dangerously close to Vice President Mike Pence. According to the Washington Post, the rioters were just seconds away from potentially seeing the vice president. We came very close to what would have been uh, a lot of mayhem and death on the floor of the Congress. As the investigation into the insurrection continues, a new security bulletin notes actors from Russia, Iran, and China are already fanning the flames to further their policy interests. The days before the inauguration, thousands of National Guard troops patrol the streets of Washington, D.C., while states prepare for the potential of more violence. We are prepared. We cannot allow a recurrence of the chaos and illegal activity that the United States and the world witnessed last week. In Austin, the Texas State Capitol, as well as the Capitol grounds, will be closed tomorrow through Wednesday, the day of the presidential inauguration. The Texas Department of Public Safety says they are aware of what they call violent extremists who might conduct criminal acts. The colder weather months in Texas can be a dangerous time for infants. The Texas Department of Family and Protective Services sees the highest number of baby deaths related to unsafe sleeping environments between December to February each year. The night team's Patty Santos reports. Having a newborn means getting lots of warm cuddles and snuggles, but taking those cuddles with you to bed could put baby in danger. Around this time of the year, you know, as the weather gets more chilly, usually caregivers want to snuggle up with the babies and put them in the bed with them. 
Rachel Galvan, a Child Protective Services Child Safety Specialist, says infant fatalities related to unsafe sleep go up every year during the winter months of December to February. So far since December 1st, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services has investigated 31 unsafe sleep deaths. Four of them are in the Region 8 area where we are located. Compare that to 2020. The agency says there were 163 child fatalities statewide. Twelve of the cases from our Region 8. They might feel the need to protect the baby more by placing more bedding, more blankets. But those are all dangerous habits. They can move that blanket that can kind of slowly rise up uh, onto their mouth and it increases the chances uh, where carbon monoxide can build up. Galvan says cultural practices also play a role. It's a generational practice where families do sleep, co-sleep. She says just because tragedy hasn't struck before doesn't mean it won't happen. So instead. Remember the ABCs of safe sleep alone on their back and in a crib. Get rid of blankets, pillows and toys from the crib or bassinet. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Still ahead on the night beat, how high will the jackpot rise for the Mega Millions drawing? Where it stands tonight and the winning numbers needed to take home the prize. It's all coming up. Plus, San Antonio switching gears when it comes to the Martin Luther King Jr. March. When and where you can watch Monday's celebration. And frustrations over supply and COVID-19 vaccines across the nation. Several governors voicing their concerns. It's coming up next on the Night Beat. As the world surpasses 2 million COVID-19 deaths, frustration from governors over what they say is a misleading vaccine supply and that the UK variant is popping up in more states. ABC's Romina Puga has more. Across the country, outrage over the vaccine rollout. State governors say they're upset with the Trump administration after learning they won't be receiving as many doses as they thought. They were lying. They don't have any doses held back. There is no strategic supply for the second doses. They claim the Trump administration's promise to release the nation's entire supply of vaccine doses would result in only a modest bump to their stockpiles and isn't nearly enough to cover the seniors that federal officials said should now be eligible. Let me be very clear. This is deception on a national scale. The federal government creates this situation where you have the floodgates open and a syringe at the bottom, 7 million people for 250,000 doses per week. Administration officials are pushing back, saying it was another misunderstanding about a system that is continually accepting and shipping out new doses. Pfizer tells ABC News they are making as much of their vaccine as they can and don't foresee manufacturing delays ahead. Nationwide, 31 million vaccine doses have been delivered, with about 12 million shots given. But only 1.6 million people have gotten their second doses. Meantime, a San Diego vaccine site briefly shut down. They had detected uh, six cases of apparent um, allergic reactions. Health officials there claim they did not disclose the severity of the reactions, but stopped using doses from that batch. And a new CDC report warns that that UK variant could worsen the pandemic in the U.S. and could become the predominant variant by March. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. San Antonio is known as the city with the largest march for Martin Luther King Jr. in the nation. While the pandemic is keeping crowds from coming together, it is not stopping the city from celebrating in honor of Dr. King's dream. Monday's celebration will go virtual. There were several days of filming scheduled to create a video for Monday's celebration. It's all in an effort to encourage residents to safely participate in Dr. King's legacy. You can watch the virtual celebration on the city's TVSA channel at 10 a.m. Live cam tonight, 46 degrees, a sky 12 gives us a nice shot back. The Alamo Dome towards downtown San Antonio. Our favorite shot. Love nice it. way to end up the work week.
Yes, another really nice evening out there. Getting cold pretty quickly, though. We're already in the mid 40s, and we'll start off your weekend tomorrow morning in the low 30s for a lot of us. A freeze in store tonight. Uh, the reason we didn't see more of a freeze last night, winds stayed up about 5 to 10 miles per hour, but overnight they should be a bit lighter, and that will help more of us to uh, drop to near freezing to start off the long weekend. Here's a quick look at your weekend forecast. Overall, pretty quiet weather. We do have rain chances on the horizon in the extended and forecast, but they are going to hold off until after the long holiday weekend. So if you need to get a little fresh air over the next couple of days, get everyone out of the house, maybe for a walk outside at one of our local area parks, socially distance. Of course, you won't have any rain issues this weekend. It'll be Tuesday and really for several days next week that rain chances pick up, and that's good news because we do need the rain here outside. Currently 43 degrees. It's 35 in Kerrville, 43 out in Del Rio as well, and 42 in Pleasanton. Winds are quite light tonight and our air is very dry. That'll help us to uh, drop down even more through the overnight hours as far as temperatures go. Now, if you are in our southeastern and our southernmost counties, anywhere from LaSalle County, Catula, over to Goliad, Beeville, Live Oak County, uh, you may have gotten an alert if you have the KSAT weather app that you are under a freeze warning tonight until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. There has not been really a wide widespread freeze so far this season in these counties. So uh, if you've got a weather station or thermometer at your house and you know you haven't hit freezing yet this season. It is possible that you could touch the freezing mark overnight tonight. I think it's really going to be close, especially down closer to the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to go closer to 34 in Beeville, uh, but over in the South County, Catula, you could see a freeze tonight, uh, a light freeze at that. It'll be very close here in San Antonio as well because we typically stay a little bit warmer um, in central Bear County in and around the metro. We'll go 33, uh, but for some of our more rural areas, you definitely could see a light freeze uh, overnight through early tomorrow morning by tomorrow afternoon. A lot of us are back in the 60s, even the low 70s for a few folks, mainly south of Highway 90 on Saturday. Overall, tomorrow will be another very pleasant day with plenty of sunshine. Some pretty active weather well off to our northeast. We've got an upper level low spinning over a portion of the Great Lakes and the Midwest, producing some snow as far south as uh, northeast Oklahoma, northern Arkansas, and some snow in parts of Tennessee tonight. But that is moving away. And for our next set of weather changes, uh, we're going to look off to the west, but again, that won't be until early next week. This weekend, things stay pretty quiet for us. We will start to see a few more clouds uh, as early as Sunday and the holiday on Monday, but by Tuesday, our weather pattern really starts to change. We'll have a big trough of low pressure drop down south of California in northern Mexico. This is going to kick in what we call a southwest flow aloft that will allow some rain making disturbances to move into Texas beginning on Tuesday. So that's when we'll see our rain chances kick in. But it does look like we'll stay in that southwest flow aloft for several days next week. Uh, so we do have daily chances of rain. Now, not everyone will see rain each day next week. But again, we will have some of those disturbances moving in to help us out. Over the next seven days, this kind of puts it in perspective over the next week. Uh, the best that some of us will do is maybe an inch to two inches of rain. I think closer to one inch at this point, higher rainfall totals off to our north. Nonetheless, this is a nice change in our weather pattern that will help us out uh, with some chances of rain next week. We'll keep you updated over the next couple of days as details become clear. Falling down into the 30s tonight, so a cold start to your weekend tomorrow. Uh, it'll be a pleasant afternoon, though, with high temperatures climbing to near 70 degrees. And again, those rain chances kick in early next week. We'll keep you updated this weekend, guys. All right, thank you, Katie. All right, let's get to those numbers for tonight's Mega Millions drawing. At last check, tonight's jackpot estimated at $750 million. The numbers are 3, 11, 12, 38, 43, and the Mega Ball five. is 15. It says 5 oh, on the screen, oh, but it's okay, 15. 15. I got one. It's 15. You got one? one? I got 12, yeah. Okay. And the mega player is four. <laughs> Better than nothing. Better than it's nothing. It's 15. Didn't the last anything, number is 15. There, there we, we go. go. We fixed it. Those are the right numbers. 3, 11, 12, 38, 43. What if somebody 15. just won and you just doused it? <laughs> what if they thought they had five and you went 15? You went, awful. no! <laughs> That would it's, be terrible. It, I didn't douse it, I understand Greg. that. I understand. It wasn't me. Yeah, I understand. I, I would hate for but that to happen. Imagine? If you want the honest opinion, I would hate for that to happen. Could you imagine? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> How do you spell redemption? It's not R-O-N. Oh. They're hoping it's S-P-U-R-S. -S. Okay. Did you get the reference? Got it. Okay, gotcha. Anchorman. <laughs> there you go. All right, man. High school basketball as well when we come back.
it's got nothing to do with defense, offense. It has to do with between the ears and being ready to play. And we had four or five guys who were out to lunch. Spurs Pop not pleased after Spurs fall to the underman Rockets and Big Board Sports. Uh, San Antonio Spurs will get a quick rematch against the Rockets tomorrow when they host Houston for the second straight game. That's after the Spurs were outplayed from the start of their game last night against the Rockets, who were only able to suit up nine players after James Harden was treated to Brooklyn. The players that were sent to Houston as part of the deal had not yet passed their physicals, so they could not suit up. And they were already short point guard John Wall, who was sitting out with sore knees. But that did not deter the Rockets, who got out to as much as an 11-point lead behind the player Christian Wood, who scored a team-high 27 against the Spurs and had this key block late in the game that led to a fast break and then Wood waiting at the three-point line put Houston ahead for good. If it had not been for the play of Keldon Johnson, who scored a career-high 29 points, it may not have been that close at the end in the 109-105 loss. Now the Spurs will have a chance to make up for their lackadaisical performance. We have another chance tomorrow night, um, you know, and, and after going through, um, you know, film and, and what we can, I think, you know, the, the mindset from what, we have and today um and and knowing that the energy of the group especially from our young guys um you know we'll be we'll be coming out really really needing to um redeem ourselves after after a poor effort last night all right, here's the matchup. Early tip time tomorrow, 4 p.m. The NBA has been forced to postpone yet another game due to the COVID-19 health and safety protocols. The game scheduled for tonight between the Memphis Grizzlies and the Minnesota Timberwolves at Target Center had to be called off after testing and contact tracing at the Timberwolves short of the required eight players that must suit up for a game. Carl Anthony Town says he is one of those players who tested positive for COVID-19. You may remember his mom passed away this last April at the age of 59 due to complications from the deadly disease after dealing with the virus for a month. Towns has now lost six other family members due to the coronavirus. The Cowboys' Jalen Smith has surgery and high school basketball next. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys linebacker Jalen Smith had surgery to repair his left wrist. Even with the injury, Smith played in all 16 games this season, starting every game for a third straight year. Not bad for a guy who didn't know if he'd be able to play football again after his horrendous knee injury in his last game in college football. Denver Broncos linebacker Von Miller is the subject of a criminal investigation in Parker, Colorado. That's according to ESP, and it says police confirm that the former Aggie is under investigation. And if it is discovered a crime has occurred, then charges will be submitted to the district attorney's office for review. Miller missed the entire 2020 season after suffering an ankle injury just before the season was set to begin. He's about to enter the final season of a six-year, $115 million contract he signed 2016, and the Broncos can release him if they fail to pick up his option in March. Seattle Seahawks wide receiver Josh Gordon has been suspended indefinitely again after the NFL today rescinded his conditional reinstatement. The league telling us the decision follows Gordon violating terms of his conditional reinstatement under the league's substance abuse policy. The NFL suspended Gordon indefinitely back in December a year ago, which was his sixth suspension since 2013, his fifth for substance abuse, his reinstatement, which was issued last month, is now off. And here's a look at the NFL playoffs. We're starting first with the NFC Divisional Playoffs. The Rams, of course, have Mal Malcolm Brown and Josh Reynolds on that team, taking on Green Bay, Dan uh, Tampa Bay, taking on New Orleans at Sunday at 540. For the AFC title, Baltimore and Ravens against the Bills in their Divisional Playoffs. That's Saturday at 715. And how about the Cleveland Browns? Remember, they have Vincent Taylor on that team from Madison, Andrew Zendejo from Smithson Valley taking on the Kansas City Chiefs Sunday at 2.05. The undefeated Jefferson Mustangs in district up 13 over Brackenridge in the second quarter. Tonight's game of Lanier High School. Eagles trying to mount a comeback as Emily Ayala knocks down the three. Mustangs moving the ball around the perimeter to Alice Gonzalez on the baseline jumper. The Mustangs can push the pace. Amelia George to Gonzalez for the bucket. Jefferson rolls Brackenridge 64-46 to go 10-0 in district 27-5A. And now for the boys of the Alamo Convocation Center. Jefferson against Brackenridge. Eagles take off fast. Gabriel Alavares brings the ball up the court. Check out the great dish to Zachariah Desmith for the hoop and the harm. A little later, nice crossover from Alvarez to get the hoop, and Brackenridge is up by five. Jefferson hanging tough. The corner three from Ricardo Sanchez keeps the Mustangs close, but the final 61-45 Brackenridge. So a double dose of Jefferson and Brack tonight. There you go. And the Jeff girls are undefeated. Smoking in district. You got it. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. That's it for the night beat. Don't forget, Good Morning San Antonio starts at 6. Good night.